everybody. Welcome to Taking Care of You with Mrs. Magoo. I'm Mrs. Magoo, and we have a great lineup for you today. First up on Vision Assist, we're going to be talking about CCTVs or closed circuit TVs. Then next, we're going to find out how we can best care for our aging skin. Then we are going to be making our own homemade all natural deodorant. It's so easy, you won't believe it. So let's move right on to Vision Assist. So what is a closed circuit TV or a CCTV? Well, it's a device that enlarges printed material to make it easier for those who have vision loss to read. I'll show you, watch this. So here we are with our closed circuit television or CCTV. Here you have your screen and this is pretty flexible. It goes up, down sideways. It sounds like it needs to be oiled a little bit there. Um, then we have our turntable. The turntable goes back and forth, up and down, and also around. Um, you have all your controls right here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I want you to see uh, a side shot so you can just see how far it comes out from the wall. Okay, so let's talk about the controls for the CCTV. Here I have my power on button. We have to wait a few seconds for the light to go on. And there we go. Uh, right now I have a newspaper um, that I'm going to be reading. So you have a dial here that um, alters the, the size. See how big you can make it? Okay, go back down. Obviously, the larger you make the font, um, the less uh, you're going to be able to fit on the screen. So it goes all the way down to that. Let's see, you can even go further. Yep, there we go. So let's get up here. Then you can also change the colors, the background colors. So there's white with dark. And as you can see, some, um, some settings show up much better than others. Like that seems like that's pretty light. Okay, so this is a newspaper right here. Okay, so you just go across. And you can either just actually push the newspaper yourself or you can use your tray table to move it as well. Okay, here I have a clothing label for a shirt. So it tells you what's in the fabric. And then you can also um, flip this up and get the washing instructions. Um, it's My fingers are too much in the way to really see it when I flip it up, but the washing instructions are on the other side. So here again, we can increase it if you need to, reduce it. Okay, and here we have a recipe book. Here again, we can enlarge it. There you go. Um, and remember, you can read magazines, you can read novels. Um, it's just, it's really a wonderful device. So you can use the uh, CCTV to read pretty much anything that has printed material on it, a prescription bottle, um, a cake mix, anything that's printed, uh, the CCTV can enlarge the print to make it easier for you to read. I also wanted to point out, this is what they call a portable CCTV. So obviously it's much smaller, but this is great because you can throw this in your pocket or in your purse and you can take it shopping with you if you want to read uh, a price tag or maybe a clothing label um, or you're in the grocery store, you want to read the, uh, the label on a can. So this is great for that. 
You know, most people when they receive the um, CCTV, they're absolutely thrilled because they haven't been able, due to their vision loss, to be able to read a book or a newspaper in a long time. So this kind of opens up a whole new world for them. Well, actually, I should say a whole old world. Um, but these devices are pricey. Uh, the larger version of the CCTV is over $1,000. But if you think um, uh, a CCTV would enhance your life and it's something you could use, you can always contact the Lions Club in your area and they will help you obtain these devices. So if you don't know um, anything about the Lions Club in your area, there's a couple of different ways you can find out. You can go on the Lions Club website. It's Lions Clubs. L-I-O-N-S-C-L-U-B-S dot O-R-G. And you can find, um, you can find a, a local uh, chapter in your area. Uh, you also can call area code 636-571-5466. And there again, they'll tell you where the local chapter is in your town. But the best and the easiest way to find um, the local chapter is to go to your uh, the senior center in your town. Most of them work with the Lions and they know um, all about them, so uh, they could definitely put you in contact with them. So, um, you know, the Lions uh, Club organization, they are absolutely wonderful. They do so many great things for people who have, who have vision loss. You know, there's wonderful pro people that work for them, um, and they really want to help, so don't hesitate to give them a call. Okay, next up we're going to be talking about how to best care for our aging skin. We're talking today about the best way to care for our aging skin, and our guests can certainly help us out in that department. I'm here with Margaret Taylor. She is an esthetician and the proprietor of Nails Etc. Day Spa right there on Market Street in Ipswich. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you. And thank, thank you. you for thank you for coming by. Well, thank you for having me. Um, you know, what are the, the biggest changes we see in our skin as we age, besides the fact that it all falls down? <laughs> Uh, the color and the lines. So, in other words, lines like you, you're referring to wrinkles. Yes. Oh, okay. And and what makes the color of our skin change as we age? Uh, the corneum, the outer layer of the skin, doesn't fall off like it used to when you were young. And as you get older, you have to help it along, so that the bright new skin that's being made by the dermatevum, the underneath layer of the skin, is exposed. Oh, okay. So in other words, a lot of dead skin cells aren't, aren't being shed like when we were younger. Absolutely. So that is changing the color of our skin. Absolutely. So, so what can we do to help that out? Just exfoliate or? Um, you should wash your face in the morning and in the evening. For, mm -hmm. Put your cleaner on, leave it on for two minutes, brush your teeth give that cleaner a chance to remove all the pollutants and the dead skin. And then three times a week you should be exfoliating mm -hmm. to help. And then through four times a year, you should be professionally getting help to take your skin back to a younger level. Okay. To get the gray off, to get all the, um, and to activate the underneath cells to give them a job to do. Oh, okay. So we can exfoliate ourselves, you know, three times a week, but you really need a professional to really get the, the deep um, seated dead skin um, off your face. So you suggest three times a year we should have it professionally removed or um, exfoliated? Yeah, the, <laughs> well, the corneum, the corneum, the outer layer of your skin serves its purpose just so that you don't get dehydrated but then it gets very gray mm. and it's very difficult to remove so oh. every four times a year when the season changes your skin changes the the weather every, your blood changes it's really good to let someone do a real professional exfoliation there are many 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 different um, machines that can be used and facials that can be used, mm -hmm. peels that can be used. Mm -hmm. 
something in whatever's in your price range mm -hmm. would be very, very beneficial. Sure. So there's something out there for everybody. To take it to a different level, to give it a boost. Right. And then you try to maintain that level by home care. Oh, okay. So let's talk topically. What can we put on our skin that will help improve it or, or help it along anyway? Like, let's say, um, how about a morning routine and an evening routine? W what should those consist of? Well, they should consist of cleaning. So the Put first the step cleaner is cleaning. on and okay. leave it on for two minutes. The oh. corneum is like plaque. You get plaque on your tub, you spray it, you let it set, you clean it. You get plaque on your teeth, you go to the dentist. You get dermal plaque on your face. Oh. So you have to put some time into cleaning. That's the most important thing. And the second most important thing is hydrating. Misting, making sure your skin gets misted and is very, very wet. Okay. Then you can add a serum, and then you can add a cream, and then sunscreen is really a necessity on a daily basis. Okay, every day sunscreen? Every day. Okay, and you put that on last after your moisturizer? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I, I didn't realize that when you put your cleanser on, you should leave it on for a couple of minutes to let it do its, I used to just put it on and wash it off. Most people put it on in the shower and it just, it just comes off too quickly. Oh, so it really needs- It doesn't, it's not magical. It needs time to do what it's formulated to do. Mm -hmm. And that's to just give it a minute, two mm -hmm. minutes uh, is perfect. Yeah. So learn to multitask, brush your teeth, have a routine every other night, exfoliate gently just to help get more skin off. And is it best when we're cleansing to use a washcloth or a sponge as opposed to just your hands? I like sponges because um, the texture to sponges Washcloths can be heavy and you don't want your elastin, you don't want to manipulate your skin a lot because you will break down the elastin. Oh. And as you age, it'll get very loose. So you want to gently take it off. You want to leave the cleanser on longer and then take it off. Okay, so a, a washcloth is, is a little bit harsher on our skin as opposed to a sponge. If you're really rubbing Mm -hmm. you're going to ruin your elasticity. Now, what if you just wanted to use your hands? Are your hands just not enough to really remove the dirt? I think it's better with the sponges. Do you? Okay. Yeah, my training, and I can see why. Because when I just splash water on top of the cleanser, it doesn't come off. Oh. Like if I just gently wiped it away. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, for our AM and PM routine, we're going to cleanse. Then we're going to, you said, hot, spritz our skin? Mm hmm Okay. So, that just entails taking some water, probably um, distilled water is probably best. And if you don't have any, all you have to do is, you know, put a pot of water on, boil it for five minutes, and voila, you have distilled water. So, you're, you're just getting rid of a lot of the toxins and whatever's in the tap water. So we're going to spritz our skin after we cleanse, and then we're going to use a serum? Mm hmm Okay. And what does the serum do? Well, there are many, many serums. It depends on your skin type and your skin condition. Serums for aging, specifically to get into the deeper layers of the skin and to get that collagen moving. So you would rotate that, but first you'd make sure you were hydrated. Hydration is everything. You should not buy an expensive serum for aging unless your skin is hydrated. Okay, so it's very important to spritz your skin. Yes. The there, second step and then mm -hmm. put your serum on. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you're going to put a moisturizer on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, in the evening, in, during the day, I'm going to use a day moisturizer, and then at night, should I use uh, what they refer to as a night cream, or does it really make any difference? It depends on your skin type and your condition. Yes, at night you should be using something different, sometimes a little heavier, sometimes with a little um, retinol or a little glycolic, mm -hmm. or something in it that's going to help pack man off that corneum, mm -hmm. especially if you don't do a lot of exfoliation. You can exfoliate using the right cream at night. Okay. Because I've heard a lot about retinol. Mm -hmm. um, 
that it really helps like rejuvenate or, or make new skin cells? Is that true? Yes. Oh, okay. There are different grades. Yeah. There are different grades and you can use a very small percentage and then there are a heavier percentage mm -hmm. that you can use less. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so uh, I also read that if you're going to use retinol in your cream or in a serum, you should only use it at night. Absolutely. Okay. Because it does make your skin photosensitive? Very photosensitive. Okay. So and never use retinol during the day, only at night. Now, does our skin's needs change with the seasons? I think in New England, absolutely, absolutely, because we put our skin through a lot of stress with the cold and then going into hot, heated, heated areas mm -hmm. and, and the sun and the wind and the... Um, your blood changes, mm -hmm. you know, your, every, your diet changes, and your skin changes. Your skin is only a reflection of your health. Okay. So, um, let's say in the summer, should I maybe use a lighter moisturizer and a little, uh, something a little heavier in the winter? Yeah, in the summer we have more humidity, and it's not as dry, and um, people are running more hot. And you, they don't like a heavy cream on their face. They mm -hmm. like something really light, protective, hydrating, and it's not more more important to put sunscreen on. It's more important. You're really you're really stuck on that sunscreen. Huh? Yeah. That's <laughs> that the is, most damaging thing. Is that is sun. so important. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Well, Margaret, that was great information. Um, coming up next, we are going to be making homemade all natural deodorants. Margaret, you want to stick around and help me make some deodorant? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. <laughs> we'll be right back. We're going to be making some homemade all natural deodorants today. Now, Margaret, I have given you a store-bought, just an average run-of-the-mill store-bought deodorant. Now, can you read maybe the first two ingredients in that deodorant? Aluminum, zirconium, Trexchlorodex. <laughs> that's okay. I think that's sufficient. I found it. Ninety percent of the deodorants that we looked at, um, aluminum was the first ingredient, which means that it, that's the most percentage of what's in your deodorant is aluminum. So you know when you put something on your skin, it goes directly into your bloodstream, right, Margaret? Yes. So you know, just think you're putting aluminum into your system. So why don't you just eat a piece of tin foil? <laughs> so anyway, we're, um, and, and you know, there are um, all natural options. So this size deodorant here, I looked, uh, I looked around, and there are all natural deodorants, but uh, an all natural deodorant this size, which is 2.7 ounces, ran anywhere from 11 to $16. So we can make it ourselves for the cheap, a lot less expensive. So first of all, I'm going to give you a, uh, a dry version, and then I'll give you a spray version. Now, the chemicals in this deodorant, um, they are put there to block your pores, to prevent you from sweating. Now, sweating is an all-natural way your body has to detoxify itself. So I don't know why you would want to hold all those toxins in your body. I mean, you might just explode. So we don't want to prevent you from perspiring. We want to control the odor. So the first uh, deodorant um, that I made, this is the dry version. It consists of baking soda and cornstarch. Now, everybody knows baking soda is wonderful. Uh, for reducing odors. And the cornstarch will help um, absorb the wetness. Now, baking soda is just too irritating to put directly on your skin. So that's why we mix it as well with cornstarch. So it's one part baking soda to six parts cornstarch. So here I have mixed up a teaspoon of baking soda and six teaspoons of cornstarch. So I have... Right here, this is a salt shaker that I got at the dollar store. Two for a dollar, can't beat it. So I have this clean container. I'm going to take my funnel. Okay, here we go. And 
Okay, you got the container there. I'm gonna, and you know, you guys, do yourselves a favor and buy a set of funnels. I mean, I used to have one. Half the time I couldn't find it, but since I bought a set, I don't know how I lived without them. They, they just, they're so useful for everything and especially avoiding a lot of big messes. Okay, so I'll hold the funnel there, Margaret, if you want to just transfer that in there. All in there. Then I'll put the cap on, and there you go. You have all natural deodorant for pennies. So, you know, you just put this in your hand and, and dust it under your arms. So next up, we're making a spray deodorant. And we are going to use magnesium oil for the spray deodorant. Now, you know, 80% of the population is magnesium deficient. Did you know that? Uh, yes, actually. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, Mrs. Smarty Pants. <laughs> Um, no, but 80% of the population is magnesium deficient. And the interesting thing about magnesium is the lower your magnesium levels, the more potent your body odor is. So that's why we've got magnesium oil in this particular uh, deodorant spray. So if you want to keep your body stink down, keep your magnesium levels up. So we're going to be spraying this on our skin, so it's, it's a great way to get some magnesium into your system. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using one tablespoon of magnesium oil. Now you can get this at your health food store, Whole Foods, you can get it online. A tablespoon of magnesium oil. We're going to be using just a dash of sea salt. We're going to be using good old witch hazel. And Margaret has the lavender essential oil. So what you want to do is you want to mix the lavender essential oil with the, uh, the sea salt <clears throat> and the tablespoon of magnesium, and you're going to pour it into a spray bottle. And please use glass, uh, because you know when you use plastic, a lot of the chemicals from the plastic can leach into your deodorant, and you don't need to put any of that um, stuff on your skin. A lot of times you can get paraben-free plastic, but just make sure that it is paraben-free. But I really like glass the best. So you're going to mix up the essential, what you're going to, um, I'm sorry, with the uh, lavender, you're going to use 10 to 15 drops of lavender, however you prefer the, the strength of the scent. And you don't even have to use lavender either. If you don't like the smell of it or if there's another essential oil, you prefer the scent to lavender, that's fine too. So we're going to mix the lavender with um, a dash of the sea salt and the magnesium. So the sea salt is going to help the essential oils stick to uh, the liquid, which is your witch hazel. So a tablespoon of magnesium oil, um, your 10 drops of uh, lavender oil, uh, your sea salt, you're going to put that in your, your spray bottle, and then you're going to fill the rest of it up with your witch hazel, whatever space is left. Fill it all the way to the top with the witch hazel, and make sure you shake it before you use it. You know, if you don't have any sea salt, it's okay, because sea salt is, you know, it's good because sea salt is another mineral, which is good for you, but um, it's sort of like a binding agent between the liquid and the essential oils. So, you know, if you aren't able to add sea salt, just make sure you shake up the, uh, the container um, before you use it. So there you go. You have a dry all-natural oil and you have a, sp a, a dry, excuse me, a dry all-natural deodorant and a spray all-natural deodorant with good things in it for you. Um, Margaret, thank you so much for helping me out with that <laughs> demonstration and thank you so much for all that great skincare information. Now, uh, before you go, tell us what sort of services do you offer at uh, uh, Nails Etc. Day Spa? Um, full spa services. We started 31 years ago with manicures and pedicures. Wow. We spread into massage and facials. And um, then we've added microderm, microcurrent, laser. I do a lot of laser uh -huh. for um, skin reju cellular rejuvenation and hair removal. Oh. We um, do eyelash extensions, we tint and perm eyelashes, we do spray tanning, um, besides waxing, um, we don't rush our customers at all, the services are performed by very uh, well-trained professional people. Mm -hmm. 
and we really enjoy it. So yeah. there are so many um, different skin types and different um, skin conditions. It's really nice to be able to set up a nice protocol and every customer is different. Mm -hmm. We customize it to your needs, to what you can afford, and we try really hard to make it affordable for everybody to maintain healthy skin mm -hmm. and a healthy body. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. And you must enjoy it if you've been there for 30 years. Oh. <laughs> um, I have a very deep passion. Do you? Yeah. yeah. You can tell. Mm -hmm. um, so how can people contact you? Uh, they can call the salon, 978-356-9491, and leave a message on our machine, and we will get back to you before the day is out for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you could stop in. Um, what, what address are you on Market Street in Ipswich? We're at 34 Market Street. Okay. Right in the center. Mm -hmm. um, How about, do you have a website? Yes, nails, etc. dayspa.com. That will give you an oversight of our services. Oh, you know what? Let me just spell the website for people. It's N-A-I-L-S-E-T-C. Nails, etc. Day. Day Spa. Nails etc. E T C D A Y S P A dot com. N A I L S E T C D A Y S P A dot com. So check it out and see all the services that they have to offer. I, you've got quite a bit. <laughs> Margaret, thank you again. That You're was welcome. great, great information. Thank it was you. so great to have you here. And I hope you'll come back. Yes, definitely. Good. <laughs> I just wanted to backtrack for a minute. Um, going back to where Margaret was talking about. Um, using sponges for facial cleansing as opposed to washcloths. It's just a little easier on your skin. Um, I neglected to show you one of the sponges. This is a sponge, and you see how wafer thin that is? Well, once you submerge it in water, it all plumps up. Now, these are available in the local drugstore. They're just called facial cleansing sponges. Um, you can get them online, or you can get them at a spa. So I just wanted to uh, point that out. So that's all the time I have for today, everybody. Our quote of the day is, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. That was said by Dr. Seuss. Well, thank you everybody for spending some time with me today. And please don't forget to take the time to take care of you. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Oh, aren't you a cute little boy? Where's your mommy?